Good morning, y'all. We're working on a uh, customer's truck this morning. Chris, who's a local viewer of the channel, has this beautiful 1979 F-150 short bed Lariat. And he hit us up and said, hey man, we need to have our truck just, or he wants to have his truck just rawr, a little bit more powerful. It's got the 400 in it. And so I recommended to him, hey, let's go ahead and get rid of that uh, stock two barrel and the cast iron intake that's on it. So we're swapping over to a four barrel, putting an aluminum intake on it. And we're also gonna do a cam swap. I'll go ahead and throw over the stats on the cam, but let me bring up the speed where we're at on the truck right now. So Adam started doing some prep here on it. Uh, so far away, we've got valve covers off. You've taken the front grill out, the cross support so that we can pull the cam real easy with it. Um, you're marking the belts so that we know which one goes to what. And which direction they go on because they wear in place. And if you flip them around, chances are they'll probably squeak like the devil. All right, good to know, good to know. So this is what we got going on. Got to continue to pull off the front dress, get all that uncovered. Um, we'll have to drop the oil pan as well because it's tied into the yeah, the timing cover, obviously intake, it's got to come off, carbs already off. So here's the goods that we have over here. Just a regular performer uh, EF or a performer Elderbrock intake. Uh, we got a 650 Elderbrock carb. I want to say the 1406 is a 650, so this ain't too bad, you know. Whether you guys like Elderbrock, Holly, or who, whatnot, okay? This is what we're going with, with what the customer has. And then our cam we got from Iski Racing Cams. Uh, this is a pretty nice setup with it coming with the lifters. Only took us about a week to get this. They had to, they didn't have this on the shelf. They had to, you know, machine this out themselves. So even with machining time and getting delivered to us, this was actually pretty nice setup. Uh, I don't have any footage of the truck running or us going down the road before time when this happened. So we have to go just straight off of Chris and his butt dyno and see how he likes it. But let's go ahead and get in the action of tearing this pick down, all right? So Adam's got the cam out, no problem and everything like that. Got it all just assembled. About ready to put the new cam back in. Um, looking like it's gonna be pretty straightforward. Yeah. Awesome. All right. So we're gonna get this in. We can get the new. Uh, oh my gosh, dude! I got to get the new cam in. Get the new lifters in. Freaking get it all back together make things happen, so let's get after that. just cleaning up the front of the motor right now with the whole dress and putting this thing back together it's actually coming really or coming it's actually huh 
Our choice of uh, lingo there is awesome, at least in my perverted mind. Anyways, <laughs> it's looking really, really good. I'm liking it quite a bit. Uh, just the mismatch. A lot of guys would just do a flat black on this or just only blue. But, you know, with doing the two different colors, the four blue and the black, breaking it up so that it really pops, that's a very nice touch. Okay, so what do you need me to not F up? My paint job. <laughs> <laughs> Or my gaskets. All right. Okay. What you're gonna do is you're gonna hold this exhaust up. Okay. So I can weasel the pan in, get around the sump. And once I'm up here with room, we're gonna pull this back down here like here. And then I'm gonna suck the pan up to the bottom of the block. All right. Sounds good. Dang, that oil pan sure is pretty looking. <laughs> Give it a week. <laughs> all right, guys, so we're about ready to throw oil into the block and get all that prepped up. Now, one thing that we are upgrading on the truck is the filter size. So the 400 has a smaller inlet on the filter. Uh, and we are upgrading to these ones that are a little bit bigger. Now, this company, I'll throw the screenshot up on screen, but what they do is they'll sell you this little adapter, costs 30 bucks, and you just zip this thing right in there, and it allows you to throw in a larger, this pretty much the same size filter, but it has a larger opening for the fluid to go through. During that whole thing, I forgot to tell you, so we're gonna be using uh, Valvoline synthetic racing oil, and this is a high zinc, the ZR1 for our break in oil, all right? <laughs> so, <laughs> this one's got the mic, you can talk to it all you want. The most important step <laughs> in this process right here. All right. We count our paper towels. <laughs> oh, right on, right on. <laughs> so you wanna have what, seven of them, six? <laughs> 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 now I know why you hired me. <laughs> <laughs> Cause I know a guy. We're gonna go ahead and just throw him under the bus. Sydney Maplesden. Yeah, I know you're watching me. <laughs> Somebody left some rags in a fresh built 383, went down the road. Ooh. He ran it till it had compression again. But until them rags burned out of them valves, it was bad. Actually, I was just watching a video on this on Power Nation for a 300 that they tore down. Mm. And in the water pump, was a shop rag and it was probably you know from that when they were freaking doing a rebuild on it before and they stuck a shop rag in there you know keep it clean and everything didn't get pulled out and now the rag was all sucked up into the propeller of the water pump and everything so yeah yeah, yeah so definitely definitely count your rags huh Pick it up there all right so when the customer gets your parts and they're from a completely different parts warehouse than you normally get stuff, take a look at the intake gaskets and then come to find out they're freaking small block Chevy. <laughs> oh, because it says 400 on it. It says a 400. 400. Oh, man. Ow. I wonder, is that uh, for two wheel drives or four wheel drives? <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, Jesus. All right. Good to go. All right. So I'm on the phone with Napa right now. Adam being awesome and checking stuff. He looked at the intake that we got along with those intake gaskets. Lo and behold. Yeah. Small block Chevy. This intake's for freaking a 400, dude. Chevy. Oh, so we were going to be up and running yeah, tomorrow. Um, now we got to try to fix that, that. See what we can do. Chase down an intake. So, what a headache. All right. So, calling around to all the parts warehouses, and Elderbrock is saying end of the year for an intake. Oh, uh, the well in, like the Chinese knockoff, uh, you know, they're saying October, you know, for an intake on that. And. I'm going to have to start doing some deep dive in on, I don't know, eBay or something like that and see what we can do because we can't throw the factory two barrel back on this because this cam's way too big for it. That's just going to end up not being an option. So we're calling it quits for the day on this and I, I'm going to have to do some research, see where we're at, but I was wanting to do this in a whole one part video, but Looks like we're at a two-parter, guys, so yeah. Let this be a lesson, you know, definitely use research aspect on what you end up getting in from different places. You know, just talk to the buyer. He ended up ordering this stuff through Summit and apparently, you know, 400, you know, 400 sounds super easy. I, I imagine it's super easy to make this stuff or the mix it up. Especially if you got someone that's new in the parts warehouse or something like that, pulling the freaking orders or something like that. So I'm not super freaking upset here or mad. I know the customer's disappointed, but yeah, that sucks. That sucks bad. <laughs> All right, good morning, everybody. So after yesterday's fiasco with the intake and everything like that, uh, I hit up one of my friends online who uh, lives up here out of Sweetwater, Oregon, and uh, asked him, hey dude, you know, this is what's going on, freaking with the intake, and after finding out that Elderbrock's not gonna be, they're, they're all out of stock of these things, and we're not gonna be able to get one from them until freaking the first of the year, they're saying, and it, it just, you know, whatever. I was just like, dude, I was like, I didn't actually know, I was like, all the research I've seen so far, you know, I was like, man, let's let's look at getting a uh, just a cast iron, a four barrel cast iron, a factory, you know, intake, and maybe throw it on there and everything like that. But they didn't even have that as an option for the 351M or the 400 through the late 70s. And I asked him, I was like, dude, did they make those? And he's like, yeah, early 70s on the early 351Ms or uh, 400. They had a four barrel option. He's like, but they're pretty rare. And I was just like, oh, geez, come on, man. So, and then he's like, but I've got an Elderbrock performer that I'm not using on a motor. And I was just like, yeah, how much? <laughs> so we're on the road. Got up at uh, six or at five this morning, got the truck all ready and everything like that. Cause it's like a little bit over a three hour drive from my house up to his place. Knock that out. Or I'm knocking it out right now. So, yeah. We're going to go up here, freaking, and uh, show you a, uh, a bit of Kilmer's collection there, dude. He's he's a big time, freaking. You, you've probably seen him in some Facebook groups and everything like that. He's got an awesome dent side collection. He buys and sells a lot of parts and everything like that. So, we'll show you what that's all about, all right? So it was outstanding meeting up with Brian here and he just showed me around the yard. This is his wife's Bronco that we're looking at right now and it is a beautiful Bronco. It's got a little bit of roughness to it here and there, but I can see the true beauty, or true beauty in it. It's sitting on about top of 38s. As we go around over here to the garage, he's got a drag truck that they're working on here in the garage. They've actually gutted this thing out quite a bit and lightened up the weight on it a lot. And he got his Fox body in there. And then as we move around through the yard here into the back of the property, we just see a lot of the other trucks that he has lying around and that are in different states of repair that he's working on. The gentleman does collect a lot of trucks and then stuff that's not good on the trucks. He ends up parting out a lot of stuff. I mean, you can see here as we're walking along the back of the shop, he just has fenders 
and grills and headlight markers and just, I mean, everything that you would ever need. It was quite a vast collection. I'm pretty jelly myself, you know, going through and looking at the different exhaust and just everything, dude. It is a huge collection. Plus, his collection of vehicles is quite extensive. He has this really cool, um, like, recovery tow type truck that he's in the middle of building. Dude, this thing was a sick super cab with the dually in the back and everything like that. I like that a lot. And then along with his just different F-250s and F-150s, he's got another step side back here as well. That, uh, man, if you ever want to get rid of that, Brian, I might end up uh, wanting to take it from you. It's okay. He does have his crew cab over here that he's working on as well. It's coming along. He's been working at getting this thing up and running for a little while, but you know how projects are. They just seem to get away with you. And he's got another crew cab over here inside the shop as well that belonged to a friend of his. But yeah, just a ton of gear. If you guys ever need something, hit him up. If you're in the Pacific Northwest, he's really friendly. He's uh, willing to work with a lot of people. If there's just whatever you need, he's probably got it. I'm pretty sure. It's just an extensive, extensive collection, all right? But yes, very big thank you to Brian for hooking us up with uh, this intake, dude. That was save the day, big time. Thank you very much, buddy. All right, so that's Brian's place, and we're back at the shop now. Freaking drove back down next day, and we just got this intake cleaned up, man. And look at this. I mean, we took it over to the machine shop. Adam recommended we just go in there, have an acid bath and um, be blasted. And this thing doesn't even look like the intake that I picked up. I mean, I could almost pass this off, it looks like, as brand new. It's so clean. I mean, there's only maybe a couple spots that show some uh, telltale signs. And you've got to look in, like, inside, like, say, the ports here or something like that to be able to tell that that thing is not clean i mean that's quality, immaculate quality machine white city oregon dude yeah they are awesome so we're getting ready to throw this on there i'm uh, wrapping up getting some prep done and everything like that for us to get all that on top of the motor over there and then do a fire up and get moving on this thing all right all right so adam just primed us so tell me like how you end up doing this buddy so okay. Ford goes counterclockwise because the distributor is in the front of the cam versus Chevy goes clockwise because it's in the back end of the cam. However, this is a little cheat trick, 5 16 on a Ford oil pump drive rod, whatever you want to say. And we just throw a nice old cheapo Lowe's drill on here and run her backwards until we get some oil coming out. And if there's oils coming through your push rod, there's oils in your lifters, so we won't have any dry start issues. Hell yes, dude, that's freaking awesome. All right, so here's the Elderbrock car, about 1406. It's a 600 CFM Elderbrock automatic choke. Getting ready to throw that on top of the motor as well. It's getting a little bit later in the day here. We're just gonna button up a couple more things and then come in on Monday and- uh, God damn, that looks good. It does look sexy as hell, man. Now, mm -hmm. yeah. finish this up and then come in on Monday and uh, fire her off, man. That's the devil right now. Hell yeah. Mm. All right, guys, back in the shop this morning, working back on the truck. Uh, we're kind of just buttoning things up, aren't we, Adam? Yes. So, so you got the radiator back in. Yeah. Where we at? We just got a down two pulleys, fan, shroud, some tranny lines down here, hoses. We've got the vacuum lines all hooked up back up there. We were able to utilize the original Ford OEM vacuum vacuum connection. Um, get some clean rotor, clean distributor, put the spark plugs back in, run a fuel line. A couple hours we should be running. Right on. Cool, man. All right, let's get it then. What you thinking? Smooth as glass. Yeah. I got it a little warm and I want to let it cool back down again. We'll probably do another 2000 RPM hold on it for a second and 
let it cool down again. Yeah. Yeah, and just go over everything, make sure we ain't got no leaks. Yeah. So forth, so on. All right. So, so far, pretty happy then. Yes. All right, awesome. All right, just got back from the parts store, picking up another gasket. So, one of the things that we're running into with this intake right here is the lip around the edge there is pretty narrow. So, Adam uh, said that we were having a sealing problem with the bottom of the carburetor. So, we ordered up this uh, spacer here, and that will give us a significantly nicer base for it to marry up to. Seal it all up good. Also, because of the vacuum ports on the bottom of the carburetor, we were just developing way too much vacuum. Is that correct? Correct. So, get this thing sealed up, and then we should be pretty much good to go here. All right, so Adam's been fighting this radiator right here. Uh, just trying to get this little pinhole that's right there at the bottom of it, you know, cleaned up and it's just, it's not working in his favor at all. So, no. what? so we're gonna back up <laughs> two steps. <laughs> so we can take one step forward. One second, we're gonna, yeah, one step forward. <laughs> Get it out on the ground, reseal it with the torch and the solder and make sure that it's got an even coat all the way around. All right. It's just uh, one of those things, you know, but as soon as we're done with that, that should be it. You know, we gotta go do our test it's, drive. It's not like we can go to Napa or O'Reilly's and get a brand new brass radiator. So. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's get after it. All right, so where's it been leaking out of? Right up in there. Awesome. All right, so Adam just got the radiator back in here, got her topped off, and how are we looking, bud? We got any leakage at all? We are dry. The stuff you see running down is from the splashing on top. Awesome. But we have a good, solid, clean weld. Hell yeah. Right on, dude. Right on. Freaking stellar work. So now we just get to take her down and put her out on the road. See how she is? Yes. Right on. Yes, it's that time. It's that time. Let's go check this thing out. Pedal to let the shit closed. Turn the key, fire up. All right, let's see what uh, new cam in a 400 feels like. Pretty big uh, jump here going from uh, a two barrel intake over to a four barrel intake, four barrel, and the new cam. Plus, his vacuum advance was not working. Like, some significant changes here.
size. There's, that's got some pretty good get up and go on it. There's no way that this fucking thing ran like that. What's this though? So like I said, one one kick of the pedal. Dude. Right on. Big difference from the other <laughs> Alright guys, so Chris is super happy with the truck. You can see his grin right there just being stoked, dude. And that makes me feel really good with what we did. Now with the 400 there, the stock horsepower out of it from the factory was like 169 horsepower. They were not freaking, you know, big old horsepower tire ripping monsters. They did produce a decent amount of torque. But this setup is going to be quite a bit better for him. I mean, he was talking to me and with his stock two barrel that it didn't look too bad and everything like that. But his uh, <sighs> vacuum advance on his distributor was freaking not working at all. So every single time he'd get on it, the freaking truck just fell on his face or on its face. All right. So adding in the four barrel, adding in the new cam, which is gonna bring a lot of his mid to higher horsepower levels up quite a bit and everything like that. He's just tickled pink, all right? Here in a thousand miles, we're gonna have him come back in the shop. We're gonna do an oil change on it again. Check it all over, make sure that we're solid on that, all right? But as for that, this thing right back here is a crew cab, or not a crew cab, a super cab that we were working on. Um, I just got this in at a deal and the big reason I got it was because it had a 460 in it right here. And we got our C6 and a freaking MP205 behind it. This is the motor that's gonna be going in the copperhead. So you guys stay tuned for that, all right? But as for now, let me know what you guys think. If you enjoyed the video, hit that subscribe button. 2020 style, 2020 style, it's 2021. It's been 2021. Freaking, we'll see you on the next one. You have a good one.